Hi, I'm Denise Gagne. I'm the creator of Music Play and Music Play Online. And I'm here today to do an overview of Lesson 32 for the first week of May. I'm on the classic site, musicplayonline.com. This site is going to be retired at the end of June, but you can still use it until then. Our online learning modules are on the left. And if you want to start with pre-K, that's where you'll find it. So this is the lesson we'll be looking at this week. But I'm going to take you to the beta site. This is beta.musicplayonline.com. And the learning modules are here. And we're going to go through each grade. I'm going to start with pre-K. So pre-K lesson 32 for the first week of May, where there's our introduction and our objectives. All the printables are here. We have the new Hello song that's English, French, and Spanish, and we'll use that till the end of the year. You get to name each of your children in this little song. It's actually lots of fun. And then we do Shake It with our little people. First, the kids' demo video, and then the um, lyrics video if you want to be able to read the words. You can do one or the other, or you can do both with your students. It's up to you, but it's fun and it's easy and... Let's clap our hands and stamp our feet. Let's tap our hips. It's really neat. Let's pat our knees and feel the beat. Let's shake it, shake it, shake it, and shake it, shake it, shake it, and shake it, shake it, shake it, and stop. Let's tap our cheeks. So fun, easy for the kids to follow, just good beat keeping practice for them. There was a little turtle and he lived in a box. He swam in the river and he climbed on the rocks. He snapped at a mosquito and he snapped at a flea and he snapped at a minnow and he snapped at me. He caught the mosquito and he caught the flea and he caught the minnow but he didn't catch me. So when you're doing poems like this with your little people, say them quietly. Then say them loudly so that the kids experience those concepts. Don't just do the poem once and leave it. You um, expand and extend the learning. And in a future lesson, we'll be talking about separated when the turtle climbs on the rocks and smooth when the turtle swims through the water. And here's a kid's demo with me and my twin granddaughters when they were three doing the little turtle poem. We're doing the letter N. And for each of the letters, there's worksheets and supporting resources. You can use one, you can use all. But the one that I like um, the best with them is this one. It gives some guided printing practice. They draw two things that start with the letter N. So we start with the song. Um, letter, uh, letter N says N. Letter N says N. Letter N says N. So we start with that and then I actually have a nanny goat story. It's in the worksheets. So if you want to do the story, download the worksheets and you read it to the kids. I generally show them the letter poster while I'm reading them the story and oral storytelling is an important skill. It's a good way of communicating. Here's the letter N worksheet that I like the kids to do. If you have virtual students and they don't have a printer at home, just tell them. Practice writing the letter N and then draw two things that start with the letter N and label them and color them and get a grown up to help you print the words. Now we have a song for Mother's Day. We actually have one week to prepare. Probably should have started this a week ago, um, but this year it's it's quick. It comes after the first week of May in school. I love this little song. Kids helped me write it. Very pretty. And then my little pre-K class shows some possible movements. They certainly yeah, weren't, I totally want to ask you weren't perfect. I want to go into... In my world, there are no children. 
I help them with the words as they go. camera. He was an interesting little one to teach. I review Humpty Dumpty and again, quiet, loud, fast, slow. Um, I, I like this. And if the kids are at home, <clears throat> ask them to find a stuffed animal and do Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall on their laps. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And the stuffed animal goes all the way to the floor. Then I usually go faster. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. So they experience fast and slow within the context of the actions. And um, if you ever do a family music class, this is a fun one to do with bouncing the babies. And then we have our goodbye song, skin a rinky dinky dink, skin a rinky do. And that is our pre-K lesson 32 for the first week of May. The kindergarten lesson, 32 for May week one, has lots of options for you. You are certainly not expected to do all of these, but choose the ones that fit with your program the best. So we've got the new hello song again in kindergarten, and we have a lovely play along. And this is a body percussion play along. So they simply copy what is done in the pictures to Ready, go. So the different sections are marked. I don't label this with kindergarten necessarily, but it's good to introduce the concept. You, you, in music, you learn sound, before symbol. So in this case, they're experiencing the B section as different movements before we've even talked about B sections, or you may have. Um, Bobo comes back and we have some melody patterns with this Bobo. And then we learn the song, On a Log, Mr. Frog. And I have a cute little game with it um, that you can play. I line the kids up at one end of the room and I give one of the kids a frog. And we sing the song and then they see who can go the farthest in four jumps. No touching. They're spaced out already. Um, so this is a game that you can play easily in in-person instruction with COVID restrictions. You can also do it virtually. You ask your kids on your Zoom to go stand as far back from the screen as they can. You sing the song and they jump four times and we see who is the winner. You might want to have a, a challenge where <clears throat> two kids do the contest or three or four, depends on how many you have joining you on your Zoom meets. <clears throat> now we're gonna learn a little, um, sound poem splish splash through the puddle splish splash bloosh splish splash through the puddle splish splash bloosh and find an instrument that'll make a nice splish sound i've got my pool noodle scrapers splish splash through the puddle splish splash bloosh splish splash through the puddle splish splash bloosh or you might use shakers, or if you have an ocean drum that you could tilt back and forth, that would work really well too. And then we do the story of On a Log, Mr. Frog. So it turns the song and that poem into a story that the kids can follow along with. Mr. Frog. It was a bright sunny day and Hunter couldn't wait to go outside and play. Hunter put on his boots and jacket and walked to the park. After three days of rain, there were lots of puddles in the park. The first puddle was a small one. Hunter splashed through the puddle in his rubber boots. Splish, splash, splash through, through the, the puddle. Splish, splash, 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 splish. Splish, splash through the puddle. Splish, splash, splash. And you want the kids to in join in. In the middle in. of the puddle, there was a little frog sitting on a log. On a 
along, Mr. Frog sang his song the whole day long. Glum, 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 glum. So instead of taking a storybook and finding musical ways to interpret the storybook, I've taken a song and turned it into a story. And there's about eight or nine of these in Music Play for Kindergarten. And originally what I wanted them for was a way to use songs for which we didn't have a good game. Now we do have a good game for Analog Mr. Frog, um, but that game took a little bit of thinking and working to invent. So now we have both. For Analog Mr. Frog, we have a great game and we have a wonderful sound story, create sound effects activity for your kindergarten students. We have a Mother's Day song for kindergartens. Mums are special, and it's a pretty little song. Rat I'll sing first. Oh, we have that's the rote teaching of it. Here's the full song. And you can see repetitive lyrics, so easy to learn for kindergartens. And what we've given for you is some options. One option is to make a Mother's Day card. So I fold my paper in half, I draw a picture, and on the back of the card are the lyrics of the song so that the kids can sing the song to their mother on Mother's Day. I actually got videos from a teacher in Ecuador last year of her students that had gone home and learned the, um, I don't know if it was this Mother's Day song or another one, but they had learned a Mother's Day song and sang it to their moms and they were absolutely gorgeous. So that's option one is to make a card. Option two is to make a class book. Now in the class book, I have created a template. One child can decorate the cover and then the words, moms are special, moms are nice another child would decorate that. And then mums are special, mums are nice. The lyrics of the song are spread out among all these pages. In fact, if you have more children than pages, you could get them to write some of their own ideas if they're at that stage. Um, kindergarten, uh, kindergartens usually aren't. But what you do then is after they're illustrated, you take them to a coil binding machine, put coils on them, and then you have a big book to use in your classroom. And if you have a black Manhasset type music stand, it fits beautifully onto that black music stand. I like to take these to the photocopier and enlarge before I give them to the kids so that I end up with an 11 by 17 book and that it really is a nice size for the students. So that's class book. Option three, you have choices. The kids could make an illustrated little book to take home to their parents. And again, all the words to the song are here. They have to take their scissors out and cut and cut, assemble in order. So they're going to have to recognize one, two, three. They're going to have to recognize the page numbers, staple them, and then they've got a little book that they can take home. Um, I have enough of these little books done that first grade children could have a little book every week of the school year that they take home. And in populations where there aren't a lot of books to read at home, that's a way to get reading material into the kids' hands. I also copied off one of our lesson plans to show you. There are printable lesson plans for each lesson in the supporting resources. So if you're asked for formal lesson plans and this lesson suits your needs, you can print this off, turn it in, your lesson planning is done. And that's what I hope to do with these modules is to give you a lesson that you can use in your own situation. So that is the kindergarten lesson 32 for the first week of May. Now I'm going to share with you the grade one lesson 32 for May week one. And again, we do have our lesson guide created and any printables that I mention in this lesson are here. You simply pull them up, you download them, and you have your lesson plan for the week if you choose to use this. So we start with the hello song. English, French, Spanish. 
Um, the body percussion is the same as what I gave to kindergarten. I really like this body percussion. It's um, It works really well with the children. I tested it with my granddaughters and they enjoyed it. And then we're doing a review of Juanito. This week is also Cinco de Mayo. So if you celebrate Cinco de Mayo, we've got some Spanish songs from grade one up for you to use. And of course, you could go lower with them if you wish to. So this is the movement demo. And then we have the dance, La Raspa. And again, look at the kids. They're not holding hands. They're not touching. That does happen later in the dance. Um, so I would suggest an alternative option to dancing with the partner would be to dance with your chair. You use your chair as your partner. So when you see the children in the video dancing to their partner, the kids would simply stand up, dance to their chair. And when they walk around their partner, they walk around their chair instead. So that's a way to adapt La Raspa. But it's fun. This was actually a one-two split that did this. Excellent cardio. Really good for me. children there that are much lighter on their feet than I am. I kind of do in May in grade one, I do farms. So oats and beans and barley grow is a good song to talk about gardens or farms or spring. Um, these little arrows here will link to the song list. So if you ever want to see what additional resources there might be for a song, you can click on that link and get to it. This is a, a lovely version of Oats and Beans and Barley Grow, and I demonstrate the movements that I use with the song. And then we have a Mother's Day song for our grade ones. Hugs and kisses, that's my mom, makes me stop and hug when I want to run. Hugs and kisses every day. Just when I want to go out and play. I have done that for years and years and years, and they always like it. There's some funny lines in it. Um, I think their favorite line is, uh, take a bath, wash your hair, then put on clean underwear. So we have the make a card for Mother's Day for the grade ones, again with the lyrics of the song, some flowers to color and the inside for them to illustrate. And then we have a little book of That's My Mom for the grade ones. And again, if you're going, if you're pushing a cart into the classroom, don't cut these up for the kids. That's a great activity for them to develop fine muscle coordination, sequencing, because they have to read the numbers. So they illustrate the song, then they cut it out, and they end up with a little book of it. And we continue our Carnival of the Animals experience by watching tortoises. I love these live videos. They're absolutely gorgeous. Our video editors almost got them to the point where they were keeping the beat. Look at that, he's keeping the beat. I really love those videos. And then we've made new, um, this year, worksheets for them. I prefer actually the landscape sized uh, worksheet, but again, you can see we're including concepts. Is the tortoise slow or fast? Is the tortoise loud or quiet? What instruments play the tortoise? It's a string family. Is it high or is it low? It's low. So these worksheets are not just coloring, they're concepts. And I just left our Music as Literacy poster here because I think there's lots of parents, administrators that need to know music is really important for children. If you want a PDF copy of this, I've put one in the files of the Music Play Teachers Group on Facebook, and you're welcome to get it from there. So that's our Grade 1 Lesson 32 for the first week of May. Here's our grade two lesson, 32 for May week one. And we're doing a little bit of Cinco de Mayo here as well and some Mother's Day. Pick what holiday you want to celebrate because we got two of them this week. So we start with the hello song and the grade twos haven't learned Juanito. So here is the um, 
translation of it and then copy the movements. I don't, it's really interesting because the kids that I taught this to were not Spanish speaking children, but you can hear them singing along. They just pick it up like sponges. That is not our recording. That is the kids in the class singing along. And so here we have the song if you want. Again, you don't have to use both videos, just use the one if you want. And then we have the grade ones learning, La Raspa. And again, where it shows in the video to have a partner, have them use a chair. Right there. So instead of holding hands with a partner, they would simply gesture to their chair. And then when they go around their partner, they would go around their chair instead. Poison melody for the grade twos. I have done the oops version so nobody gets scared, but we want them to practice do, re, mi, so, la. And then they're going to learn the song, Who's That Tapping at the Window? A great guessing game for kids and I've got some ad, uh, adaptation suggestions so in person if you're not allowed to sing um, play the recording have the soloist clap the rhythm of the words or they could clap and say mommy's tapping out the window and then the two guessers would guess who clapped and said it. If you're virtual, you choose two guessers who cover their eyes, and then you choose two soloists who unmute. Everybody sings, but only the soloists sing, mommy's tapping at the window, and the second soloist sings, daddy's knocking on the door. And then we have a Mother's Day song for our grade twos, mom, you're the best. So learn the melody and then sing the song. There's an optional card for Mother's Day with, uh, let's just see, I think I put the wrong visual in here. This is not the right, oh, it is the right words. Um, so that's uh, the mom, you're the best for grade twos. And we have an optional little book as well that you can make for them. And then we review if you have time. Oh, my aunt came back. I love that song. I'm going to put it in as a review next week as well, because it's one that if you don't, if this lesson is too full, we don't want to lose that song. We want to keep doing it. It's just fun for the kids. Same with Johnny One Hammer. Johnny works with one hammer, one hammer, one hammer. Johnny works with one hammer, then he works with two. Or is it Johnny plays with one hammer and then he plays with two. So two hands and then two feet and then the head, and then the kids are worn out. And I left the music as literacy poster in here for grade twos as well. So that's grade two, lesson 32 for the first week of May. The grade three lesson 32 has more for Cinco de Mayo. It has the closet key game, which is fun. And again, you're going to have to adapt and be creative with adapting. Uh, the kids love the dance Los Machetes. It's new to the site. I've put it in this module for you to have it. And uh, they can certainly also do the song that um, El Barito Enfermo. And we've suggested a play along for that one. So Poison Melody to start with Do, Re, Mi, because Closet Key uses do do mi mi do do mi and i want the kids to get that solfa in their heads and then we play the game so lots of options here if you're virtual um you want to have three cups do i have my cups here i do three or four cups and you hide the key. I'm gonna put my watch under because I don't have a key. Um, I'm not supposed to let you see. I guess I'm gonna to have to have three cups that are the same, aren't I? I don't have another yellow. Okay, and then as we sing, 
I have lost my closet key. Oh, you know what? I can have three red cups and then I can do this right. Oh, shoot. I still only have two. And I know I've got more of these. So I'm going to mix up the cups as we go. I have lost my closet key in my lady's garden. I have lost my closet key in my lady's garden. And which cup is it under? You invite students to tell you. So Shauna, which cup is it under? The yellow one? No. And we'd have a second guesser. And then we would play again. But you're going to need three cups that look the same. So it actually works. If you're in person, you could do the same thing. Or you could have a child. Um, you're probably not going to be able to have a child be the hider. You're going to have to be the hider. And you just get the whole class. Um, one, one person is going to be the finder. The finder hides their eyes. You show the class where in the room you're going to hide it. Okay, I'm going to hide it right there. And then you give a flashlight to one student. This is a plastic flashlight. And um, as we sing, I have lost my closet key in my lady's garden. I have lost my closet key in my lady's garden. And when they show with the flashlight where the key is, you get louder. And eventually they will take a guess and say, is it there? And yes, that's where we decided to hide it. So creativity needed to translate all these games into games that you can play with restrictions. And if you don't have restrictions, lucky you. We're gonna learn about Cinco de Mayo. And then we're going to learn about the dance, Los Machetes. And here's the movements. And again, there's no touching. There's no hand holding in this. Every child needs a pair of rhythm sticks or dowels, whatever you have. And they walk to the right, one, two, three, four, up to 16, clicking sticks. And then they walk to the left, 16 beats, face the center. And what they do is this. They cl click right, click, left, click, uh, let's see here. I click, under, click, left, under, click, behind my back, and then click, click, click. So click, right, click, left, click, behind, click, click, click. It, it's fun. The kids like it. I've done this right from second or third grade up to grade six and they all really enjoy it and then what we do is we wave a stick walk to the right and then wave the stick walk to the left walk to the right for eight walk to the left <clears throat> so you can practice the movements before you do it with the move with the music and here is a kid's demo These were actually grade six. And you can see they're having fun. They're enjoying this. And then I've got two links for you and both are extra special. The first one is absolutely priceless. This is um, Los Machetes on America's Got Talent. We do mariachi dancing. This dance is called machetes. It's part of our culture, and we love doing it very, so much. You're a professional. You know what you're doing with the knives, right? Me and Orlando started dancing. This little guy is three years old. Let me see you do it. <laughs> he came out with a machete. He is adorable, knives. and he is talented. And he's obviously stealing the hearts of everybody in that audience.
I just love that. And your students are going to love it as well. Um, <clears throat> so we have a, a couple more activities. Pick and choose. Do which ones you think are the most fun for your kids. If your kids are at home, make some virtual instruments for them to play with, some homemade instruments, do it yourself. And then you choose one of five rhythm patterns. Uh, and I've got this in the printables. In reality, you could ask your children to fold a piece of paper into four and to write four or five of their own rhythm patterns on there. By grade three, they should be able to do this. And then they listen and they play along with El Burrito and Fermo. So I want to play my first. Now a new pattern. So, when there's a lot of language and it's a second language for your students, playing along is a really good option. They get to experience it, but they uh, we're, we're not expecting them to be able to sing every word in there, of course. We do give a translation of it. La cabeza is the head, la garganta, the throat, las costillas, the ribs, el corazón is the heart. And they have done a Spanish song just a couple of weeks ago. So El Floro is a uh, singing game with a flower, passing the flower around the circle. Um, and we can review Tingaleo and improvise with instruments between the verses if there's time. And then there's this gorgeous Inuit lullaby if you want to do that. So you're going to have to pick and choose unless you have music three times a week. But enjoy lesson three or lesson 32 for grade three. I'm going now to grade four, lesson 32 for May week one, and we're continuing with Christian body percussion, learning the dance, Los Machetes, and doing wacky music where they get to improvise and create. It's intended for boom whackers, but if you don't have boom whackers, use whatever you have. So the body percussion lesson 10 with Christian actually is a combination of three sequences. You can see the video is five minutes. It's going to take a little bit more practice than some of the earlier lessons. And again, I have written out the rhythms that Christian uses so that after you've done it by rote with Christian, you can do it with reading if you choose to. And then I've scored his body percussion. So the sequence one, if I'm reading it from here, I can see it's chest, clap, chest, chest, clap, thigh, thigh, clap, thigh, thigh, clap, chest, clap, chest, chest, clap, chest, chest, thigh, thigh, clap. For me, I'm a reader. I learn it quicker with the score in hand than I do by rote from Christian, your students are different kinds of learners. So here's two different ways for your students to learn it. One, orally and visually, just watching them. And number two, reading. Cinco de Mayo, just a little bit of information about Cinco de Mayo to read through. And then the same Los Machetes dance. I think I've included a little bit more information for the grade fours. So it, uh, the Los Machetes dance tells the story of cutting down sugar cane during the harvest. It was created by Mexican farm workers who spent a great amount of time perfecting the use of the tool, the machete, for harvesting. And traditionally, real machetes are used while performing, performing this dance. Los Machetes is a popular folk dance from the Jalisco region of Mexico. So they can find Mexico on the map. There's some fun facts about Mexico. Again, I've given the directions so that you can practice with your students before you go to the music. There's the kids demo. There's the same beautiful little video of America's Got Talent. And here is a performance of machetes by an adult group that again is really good for the kids to watch. <laughs> They do some movements here that aren't in our children's dance. But I want to get in there. So 
interesting to watch the adult version of Los Machetes. Then we have new song, Wacky Music, and this was written for Boomwhackers. It's a wacky kind of music and I like it a lot. And there's a four bar rhythm pattern. And what I want the students to do is to compose their own rhythm pattern. So if they're at home, find something at home to use for instruments. If you're in school, invite the students to choose what kind of instruments that they want. Uh, my suggestion, of course, is boomwhackers, but to use whatever you've got and whatever is, is available to you. If you've made instrument kits, pull out the pool noodle scrapers and use them. So uh, if you wish, you can have kids improvise the B, C, and D sections, and then you can invite them to create a rhythm that they do. In fact, if they can do one instrument for the first eight beats and another instrument for the second, or if they're using sticks, they could find different ways of playing them, go for it. So here's the song, Wacky Music. It's a wacky kind of music and I like it a lot. It's a wacky kind of music and I like it a lot. And I play it all the time because it sounds really hot. And I want to have fun any time of the day. I just make a little rhythm and I start to play. and you can invite your students to improv. And we actually have a really nice kids demo here of a class of kids performing it. Again, there's this link that you can go to the link and see if there's other materials for it. So that's grade four, lesson 32 for the first week of May. The grade five and grade six have... Um, the same lesson this week. I did a Cinco de Mayo lesson for them that I think will be lots of fun and they will really enjoy because we're going to work on the song La Bamba. It was actually in an earlier module for grade six, but it was only in for one week and it was close to Christmas, so you may have missed it. So the little bit of information about Cinco de Mayo, and then we're going to learn about the song La Bamba. It's a Mexican folk song and dance from the state of Veracruz but of course we know it the best from Richie Valens recording in 1958. And I have a link to a Richie Valens live performance. This is actually on Justin Bieber's YouTube channel. And here he is, America's newest rock and roll sensation. 17 years the old. California he kid, looks like a little Richie kid. So your students are going to enjoy this. a bit of a rattlesnake. Ah, so that is wonderful. We learn about Richie Valens. He was born Valenzuela, changed his name for the stage use. And his musical career was cut short so early. He he only lived, he was, he was signed and he was only doing professional music for eight months. And in that time, he had two big hits that are still popular today. I've got a link to a, a short two minute YouTube video that is actually very good. Um, and then we talk about the song La Bamba. It's in the song Jaracho musical style, which combines Spanish, Indigenous, and African elements, and it's often played at Vera Cruz weddings, um, in which the bride and groom perform the dance. So in the dance, the couple ties a red sash into a bow to symbolize unity, and they do this with only their feet. I love Mexico. I've been, I'm sure, 15 times and seen lots of the folklore performances, and I love it when they do this dance. The Jalisco dancers are always in the white. That's their traditional um, costume or their traditional dress. So this is a safe share link to the dance. You can see the beautiful white costumes and right now she has the sash around her back but as we go further on now the sash is on the floor and they're going to um, they're going to turn it into a bow with their feet. 
So that is the YouTube link or safe share link that I've got. If the link doesn't work for you, I've given you what you have to Google to find essentially the same link. Google Mexico dash Veracruz dash La Bamba. Um, La Bamba traditionally has hundreds of verses and traditionally the singer might make up verses that include jokes or insults to the dancers or audience. And so the music play recording of La Bamba uses the verses that Richie Valens recorded. And here's a translation. Para baila La Bamba, to dance La Bamba. Se necesita una poca de gracia, you need a little bit of grace. Una poca de gracia, para mí, para ti, arriba. For me, for you, hey, arriba. And our wonderful translator, Serge, who is fluent in both French and Spanish, uh, did the translation for me here. So here's the song. You can learn to sing it. And I have included an arrangement for bucket drums here. So I have my desk drum here. This is a yoga mat that I bought at Dollarama for $4. I cut it up and I used, actually I used the paper cutter for most of the cutting um, and it made 32 pads. This yoga mat only cost me $4. So I don't know what those yoga mats cost me, but it was very, very little. And so if I'm doing the A section for the rim, I'm going to use the edge of my desk. And for the top, I'm going to use my practice pad. And you practice that with the students until they're good at it. The B section, and actually this is wrong. Shoot, I should change it. It's right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right. And then I have made it into a video. really is fun. I love the song. Um, I'm studying Spanish with Duolingo, so it's a great opportunity for me to practice a little bit of Spanish. And then I have the same Los Machetes dance. As I said, the group of students that did the demo in the demo of this were sixth graders. So middle school students will have fun with this. Um, I've done it with third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It's easy enough for all of them to do and it's fun. And I have the same links to the little guys on AGT and to an adult performance of Los Machetes. So that is our lesson 32 for the first week of May. I really hope you enjoy the lessons. Please let me know in the Music Play Teachers group on Facebook if you're finding these overview videos helpful.